Hi, Terry Vanderheiden here. I'm back to show you more about masking in Lightroom Classic, but this time we're going to work with much more advanced techniques that'll give you even more control over your images. I'm going to show you my top five advanced Lightroom masking techniques. Now, if you're new to masking in Lightroom, check out my beginner's video. I'll leave a link up here. You can just click on it right there. I'll put a link also in the description for you. So when you're done with that, come back to this video so you can see the advanced techniques. If you're ready for more advanced masking, then let's get started. Here's my top five. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do, here's an image here. Uh, a technique that is not often used, but it can come in handy, is masking with color. So we're gonna click on the masking over here and we come down to range. And you got a couple of options. You got luminous, you got color. So we're just gonna go with color and you can see the mask up here. We'll go ahead and enlarge that a little bit. As you click on this, it will grab the color of whatever it is that's underneath that eyedropper tool. So in this case, we're gonna change this masking color to like a teal or something so we can see it a little bit better because orange and red are a little too close. Now let's zoom up a little bit and we can see that we didn't get all of it. So in order to get all of the color, you know, cause color is gonna have different variations of say in this case, orange, there's different levels of orange in this poppy. So we're just going to add to it and we're gonna go add and then we're gonna use the uh, color range again. And we'll just click in this area. And that's gonna to add to that mask. So you can see here that this little tag is, it's kind of like a pin is what they call it. So when you have a pin there, you know that now you've got a couple of masks that you've created. And if you don't wanna see those, you can come over here and go to show or hide pin. So I leave it on auto, but sometimes I want it on, on always. So I can always see these, these pins. If you don't want to see them, you can always hit the H key and they'll go away. So this is a way that when you're looking at something, you'll like, Oh, immediately know that there's a mask in that area. Now, another way to look at this, we'll zoom this back up. Another way to look at this is if you wanted to, right now we're masking with this teal color. Let's say, for instance, we really want to get in the little bit more granular detail of this. You have the ability to change your masks to these different overlays. So if we were going to go color overlay on a black and white, you can see how that mask stands out a little bit more. You can also come over here and go white on black, and that gives you a very pure mask of what you're doing. So in this case, it'll allow us to add to it. And let's say, for instance, we're going to add with the brush tool and we're gonna just do a little bit of painting to fill in any of these gaps. See that? You can just paint and fill this in. So you're kind of working on the mask. This is very similar to the way you can mask in Photoshop when you're really trying to get a detailed mask. And let's say you don't want anything left out in this particular mask, you can just go ahead and paint your way in. And when you're done with that, you can go back to the color overlay, which is typical of what you would do. And then of course, once you've got your mask the way you want it, you can start changing the tones and doing whatever it is you want to do to the image. So that's color range masking. Okay. On this next image, we're going to use autofill to try to create a mask the way we want it. Now we've used autofill before to subtract from a mask, but we didn't use it to make a mask. So we're going to come in here and we're going to grab our brush and we're going to go to auto mask and that will allow us to whatever is under that plus sign will be added to this mask. So we can just hit right on that and it's going to grab all the white of this birch tree, not the darks, but just the whites. As long as I don't cross over into the dark areas with that little plus sign, I'm able to lighten and grab whatever it is I want. So in this case, we've just made, a mask of this singular birch tree. And now we can go in and we can take the exposure and lighten it up if we want. But always remember the flip side of this, and that is going to these three dots and you can duplicate and invert. So we're gonna make a second mask that's gonna be everything but that. 
And then we can, of course, bring the exposure down if we wanted to, to create a more dramatic birch tree shot like that. So this is using auto brush with your auto mask in order to fill up that, that tone, whatever it's grabbed underneath that plus sign. Next one I want to show you is I know that we've used this before as well, and that is subject masking. So if we click subject, you can see, let's go ahead and flip that over to red real quick. Like you can see that the mask does a pretty good job of masking out this uh, red tail hawk. And of course we would have to go in by subtracting in this mask and using our brush tool and maybe take it off of auto mask for this case. And then we can just take out the barbed wire and the fence and we can create our own mask this way. So it works a lot of the time, the subject type of creating a mask, but there are situations where it doesn't work good at all. So here's an example here. We're going to hit subject and watch what happens. It masks off all kinds of parts of the bird feeder as well as the bird. And let's say we just wanted to do the bird. In this particular case, this doesn't work at all. So let's delete that. You can do it real easy by these three dots and delete the mask. But let's go up here and we're going to go to objects. Now objects have two opportunities to create your mask. You can use a box or you can use a paintbrush. So on the box, you just take an outline with a little box, like a marquee tool in Photoshop, then let it go. And what it does is creates a mask what's ever inside of that. So that is a much more accurate mask to work with. And if we wanted to, we could do the same thing. Let's go ahead and delete that one. You can work similarly by going into objects again and then clicking on the brush. And then all you do is you take a brush. Now it's, this is not a, a feathered brush at all. This is just a straight brush. And we're just going to brush over the area that we want to be masked out. So then Photoshop or Lightroom rather works with its AI engine to create the mask that it thinks you want underneath whatever's underneath what you just brushed. So this is a much more accurate way sometimes to get a good selection of something and that's using objects. Next thing I wanted to show you is if you want to do some masking that really doesn't, it's like dodging and burning and lightning. So what we're going to do is we're going to zoom up on this coyote picture here and we're going to go over to our mask and we're going to click and get a brush mask. And we're just going to take a soft round brush and just brush inside of the highlight of the iris rather. And here we can go in and create a little bit more exposure and we can actually saturate that with a little more yellow and saturate it with a little more color. So it's only working inside of that mask and you're just doing little parts of it. And another way you can do that is to come up here and grab a new mask and we'll do the brush tool again. And then we're going to make even a smaller, type of a brush stroke and let's go in in here and just add a little bit more highlight. So this is actually going to be a little brighter than what we just did. And you can add that in and then we can do one more brush. We'll create another mask, grab a new one, brush, and then get our brush a little bit bigger. There we go. That's more like it. And now we just slide that up on our exposure and then take our highlights brighten them up. And this is only happening inside the mask. So we'll create our whites. And now what we've done is we created highlights inside of the, the mask of just a, a normal photograph. And now what you can do, let's turn those off, those buttons off. So you can see what you've done with lightening up an eye, adding highlights and that sort of thing. You can see how that could come in handy. So the last mask that I want to show you is one of my favorite, and that's taking a couple of masks and doing what's called an intersect. So when you take an intersect a mask, you create two masks and then it, it overlaps and whatever it overlaps is now going to create that new mask. So it's two masks and you're telling Lightroom what you want it to mask as it, as you overlap, whatever that thing is in between is what's going to be your new mask. So an example right here, if we were just to grab the brush tool and take and make a nice, uh, let's make it a fairly sharp. There we go. Take a mask just right over this image. Now what we do is we come in here and we're going to go to 
we're gonna intersect mask with, and that's asking you, what kind of mask do you wanna make? And we're like, well, okay, we're gonna use the brush mask again. So as I drag this down, watch what happens. I'm gonna drag this down, and it only creates a mask, a brand new mask of what those two intersected. So you can see how this is, could be pretty handy. Let me show you how it works in, in the real world. So I've got an image here, and the first thing I'm gonna do is just do subject mask, it creates a nice mask around the wood duck, and we'll just bring up the exposure a little bit, and we'll bring up, say, the saturation a little bit in that image. So we've got a nice picture of a wood duck, but we wanna to try to improve this picture if we can. So let's go up here, create a new mask, and we're gonna create a brush mask, okay? So here, one of the things that you may or may not know in Lightroom is when you take your brush tool and you create, let's say, a large brush, and you click, and then you want it to narrow down, you can now make a smaller brush size on this side. You hold that shift key down and then click, and it just makes, it goes from large to small and creates a nice little band that we can use in this case, more like a little bit of a sunset light. So we've created this band, and now what we're gonna do is we're going to up the exposure quite a bit, and we're going to maybe make it a little more yellow how about add some yellow in there? Okay, now we've got some nice sunset light coming across. Now the problem, as you've probably already seen, is it's cutting across the wood duck and that doesn't look good at all. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go in here. We already know that subject masking works good. When we did this one here, we were able to see exactly that it did a really good job. So we're gonna go up here and we're gonna go to intersect with subject. Now watch what happens. So it crosses over and then just inside of the duck is where the mask is created. Yes, it looks stupid, but here's the key. You come over here and you hit invert. And now you've got a mask that cuts behind the duck. The duck is originally corrected with the first mask. And then uh, with this mask now, we can zoom up here and you can see it's just a mask behind this wood duck. It's pretty cool. You're able to take and create a mask along here of a beam of light and you can put it behind things and that's the way you can use the intersect for, to, to your advantage. So if you've enjoyed this type of content, give it a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe as I'll have more videos coming your way. Also ring that little bell so you can be notified of my next video. I try to get back to everyone who makes comments in the comment section. So if you have a question, go ahead and put it there and I'll try to get back to you. If you're interested in supporting this channel, simply share my videos with others. That's the quickest and easiest way to spread the word about what kind of content I'm offering here. You're always welcome to head over to my website, imagelight.com, and check out my digital products pages, where I have helpful items like my book, Razor Sharp Nature Photography. It's an ebook all about getting the maximum sharpness in all your images. I'll leave a link in the description for that as well. So until next time, this is Terry Vanderheiden. Thanks for watching.